Right, today I got a nice uh, 2004 F1 Sheraton and basically it's got a set of uh, bare knuckles in it and it's getting put back to ordinary F1 pickups to sell I've got a bit of leather for safety there basically I'm just going to undo this first pickup and cut because um, that this is the bridge pot that I pulled out to get access to it, and the night pot is trapped basically. There you go. That's all there is to taking a pickup out. Well, <laughs> desoldering a pickup, I should say. Still got a faff of it with springs. You just have to love um, people that do things a complicated way. So, you've got this wire coming from the switch. And instead of just taking it out and going to the respective pot, because the switch is here, the closest pot is here and here, instead of taking the wires out properly, you splice wires in to basically turn it into a rat's nest. I'm not going to sort it because the... Basically it's going to take me about an hour alone just to sit and tidy that up because, you know, I'm, I'm going to take breaks, I'm going to get frustrated with it, all the usual. I've got a wee cider sitting there that I'm going to be drinking as well. So I th I'm just going to leave that and put the pickups back on as they were because it's just not worth it. As you can see. Actually, bare knuckle. This was the neck one, and the bridge one is seven point seven. So I don't know what. Obviously, there's no other marking to indicate what set that is, but I, I don't know. They sounded great anyway. If I've given them a quick plug in before I'm um, taking them out just to see. But yeah, um, new pickups got to go in. Um, Pardon me. Got a Samsung <laughs> and a Al Nickel Classic. I think I'll put the because because that's written that way. I think I'll put this one in the neck. And because these are designed to go in the, these can go in any position. Of course, any pickup can go in any position. But this one actually says, you know, if it's going to. Uh, a dot, i.e. a 335 steel guitar like the Sheraton, you can go in the neck or bridge, and I actually do like these pickups in the bridge. So, personal preference, but that's my preference. Um, it's going to bang them into the pickups rings and wire them up. Right, I have the neck pickup in and put the pot back. Um, there's my wire clippers. So I just need to expose the wire here and get it soldered up. Here we go. Hold on. Ah, my girlfriend's doing her um, online choir or virtual choir, whatever, with the Zoom. Um, basically she left, she, she's in the living room, I'm in my wee workshop and she forgot to close the door so you probably heard her sound like two seconds ago or two minutes ago. I mean I could still hear her but I don't think the microphone's picking it up. Mind you the microphone barely fucking picks me up anyway so. go. It's always a big faff getting these thing with. I do have wire strippers but to be honest I find it much easier just to kind of cut it and pull it. I say cut it you're just kind of nipping into the insulation. And then you're only left with like three little weak points. 
a couple of little weak points and nine times out of ten you can just rip it off. So that's what I tend to do. Love this thing. A desolder pump just quickly plus or sucks um solder out of like the eyelets and the uh, pot lugs and things like that. You can use it on like flat surfaces, but it doesn't work as well. Just plop those in there. There you go. Ground wire just kind of get that onto that little blob of solder from the original grounding bit. Ah. <laughs> That's what you don't want to happen. <laughs> All the other wires popped off. Not a problem. Normally not a problem, but it's decided it's going to be a problem. I think this one's on its last leg, because I don't know if you can hear my solder station is kind of making like weird fluttering noises and things like that. There you go. Give that a few seconds to cool down. Oh, that's burning. Yeah. Watch that red light. Oh, it's staying steady. It's not going to do it now, I bet you. No, it's not. But it's making all sorts of strange noises, so I do have a couple of spare ones, but no way you'd rather get as much use out of one as you can. That's cool enough to handle. I'm actually lucky in the sense that whoever was last in here took the lock washers out. Because normally with the Epiphone you have like, you know, your normal nut and washer. And on the inside there'll be a lock washer or sometimes like four. <laughs> I've seen in one or two guitars. White is the neck, so I want the switch going in this way. And uh, yeah, once I know we wrench thing. There it is. These are really handy for switch nuts. There we go. I'll leave this here then because it's Friday night. Uh, 10 to 9 in the evening 
So I'll just get the screws and things like together and I'll do a wee sound demo tomorrow when I get up. So where is it down? About there. Quite a bit of flex in there. I keep forgetting that this is just a thin plate. I've accidentally accidentally flexed tops like that a couple of times putting knobs on I forget every time and I don't know why but it's never enough pressure to make any to damage anything so yeah Epiphone Sheraton now with Epiphone pickups in it without missing screws though yeah they're just sitting there so I'll do that Right, just very quickly going to go over how I set back up height. Um, first I start just by roughing in the shape of the pole pieces. Kind of doing a, a step up on the bottom three. Bring the G up a little bit, that's fine. Maybe bring this top E up. That's kind of as far as I go with it, yeah, really, nothing to complicated then hold the hold the last fret with humbuckers like this I'll go for about one and a half millimeter on each side it's just a steel ruler with millimeter, uh, half millimeter segments at the start I need to kind of balance that going back and forth Because when you bring one side up, the other side changes. Like I say, this is purely a pickup swap, so I'm not bothering with any setup work or anything because it wasn't asked for. Quite simply. So again, just rough the whole piece shape. There's a Really good Premier Guitar article which is gives you kind of general pole piece uh, thing. And that's just what I use because it's, it's actually worked pretty well. Haven't had found a reason to go against it yet. And again, same height, uh, one and a half millimetres, because it's just kind of a reset button, if that makes sense. Because that's what, like, 50s uh, Gibson spec is, is one and a half millimetre, well, whatever the inch conversion is, which is just, like, a hair under or over, I can't remember. It's always important just to make sure you're actually pressing that last fret down. Because you try to do it without it, then by the time you're playing the last fret, your string's hitting the actual pickup, which is not ideal. So come down to like save. That side was set and then when I brought this side up, this side now needs to come down. Right. Pulling that good. Let's quickly tune it up.
I'm fully expecting one of these strings to break because they're really old. Or they look really old, I should say. I actually really like this guitar, <laughs> I wish I was the one buying it, but unfortunately not. Um, so yeah, uh, check out Jim Marr Guitars, he's done a quick video on this, just going the overview of the condition. And uh, in his video, it was before he brought it to me, so in his video he's got the beer knuckles in it, but these are the Epiphone pickups. Samsung in the neck and uh, a Nico Classic in the bridge, which sounds pretty good. <laughs> Right, um, I'll recheck the measurements once everything's settled in because obviously you could hear it was tuned way out. Uh, just well, I just put enough tension on it just to rough in the pickups, but yeah, that's all there is to it. And I'll see you next time.